Hey everybody, it is Harlan. Welcome. We have so much to cover tonight. Uh, just before we get started, and we're going to dive right in because there's a lot of information here. I just like to verify, can you see my screen? Um, can you hear me? If we have a yes and yes, type it in. And away we go because there's just so much stuff to cover. Now, I'm going to plunge in here. Before we begin, I'm going to make a suggestion, and that is, um, that is, go ahead and 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 make sure you have something to write things down with. There's going to be a lot of information that I'm going to give down, and you're going to want to remember. As a matter of fact, I have to begin with an apology, and the apology that I begin with is that. I'm going to give you more information for free tonight during this webinar than most people have in paid programs. We're going to go over so much stuff tonight. So what I want you to do is to make sure that you get this stuff down because it's going to make a direct it's going to have a direct effect on your copy. Frankly, if you're looking somewhere else, if you're looking at your email, if you're looking at Facebook, um, you know, to see if you've managed to change someone's opinion about the election, you're probably wasting your time and you should just like hang up now and, and, and go play on Facebook. Because I've spent a lot of time and a lot of thinking the last couple of days about how regular folks can do a significant amount of improvement to their own copy without hiring a copywriter. And that's what we're going to be talking about. My goal is by the time this evening is over, you're going to understand some real principles of copy and you're going to be finding out the mistakes that the majority of people make. So for example, in the past week, two friends showed me their copy and when I looked at the copy, even though they had no idea who the other one was, both were making the exact same mistakes. Now, copy goes into everything that you do. Copy it starts with, um, you know, if you're looking to bring people over from Facebook, your Facebook posts, your Facebook ads, your landing pages, your webinars, um, your sales letters, your emails, everything involves copy. There is probably no greater um, ability to make money than to have good copy. If you have a blog and you want people to take action, if you have a product and you want people to buy, all of this involves copy. Now, sometimes the you know the the, the belief that copywriters love to have, I love to have is that it takes a copywriter to, to produce good copy. And I have to tell you, that's not always the case. Sometimes the product owner knows it so well that no one else can come close to what they are doing. So it is for people who are really kind of clueless about copy. It is for people who want to write better copy for their own products. Uh, it, it's for people who who have something going and they don't want to make stupid mistakes, all of these people are going to get something out of this call. Um, so with no further ado, I'm going to plunge in. Seriously, if your attention is anywhere else, um, you're really wasting your time because it's just a heck of a lot of copy. With that, let's jump in. First of all, there are three things that you need to know about. And copywriters like to say that the most important element is copy, but it's not the case. There are three things. They are the list or who you are selling it to, the copy, and the offer. And the most important one of these three is the list. If you have a really good list, if you have a buyer's list, then... Um, then that is, is going to be the number one determining factor in whether you make a little money 
or whether you make a lot of money. Um, for example, let's take um, let's take the la launches, internet launches. Everybody knows what an internet launch is, and there was a launch recently. Uh, Ryan Levesque did a launch, and um, according to rumors, it brought in more than three million dollars. Now, of course, half of that goes to affiliates. There's a lot of expenses here and there. But in the end, after completing a launch, Ryan has something else that's even more valuable. He has a hot list. So Ryan can turn around now and go with his list. And there are all kinds of uh, launch contests. There was one uh, recently um, about um, membership sites. Uh, there's another Eben Pagans launch going on right now on product creation. And guess who's winning the affiliate um, uh, race? It's Ryan because his list is currently hot. So when you have a really good list, um, copy and offer are secondary. If you have not such a great list, if you are going, let's say, to a cold list, you're bringing in cold leads on Facebook, well, then that makes the copy and the offer more important. Now, I have to tell you that there are a lot of people who begin their copy, what we'll call top down, um, and they focus on... Um, they focus on the headlines. They focus on the introduction. But they don't spend as much time on the offer. I have to tell you, because they figure the offer comes last, it's the least important. So the first big concept that I want you to know is that um, people should start with their offer first. Okay, you want to start with your offer first, and you want to make sure that um, that you know what you are um, going to do before you get into um, creating that offer. You need to know who you are writing to. You need to know who your customer avatar is. Now, how do you find out your customer avatar? Well, a lot of people hallucinate on who their customer avatar is. And they don't spend a lot of time, and therefore they don't know to whom they are writing. And they write to a specific audience, which may be an incorrect audience. So we spend a lot of time researching. For example, right now I'm working with someone in the supplement industry. And they are working on a, um, a heart offer. This is going to be an offer for um, a, a special type of omega oils. And last night, uh, we went to interview the cardiologist who is going to be the star of this, um, of this video. We spent a lot of time, and in, in the course of... of, of talking to him, um, I asked a question, and when did you decide you wanted to become a cardiologist? And when did you decide? And it turns out that he decided um, because his father was being taken to the hospital fairly often when he was a kid. He was basically raised himself. He was like a, an or orphan with his parents living. And he decided that um, his response was going to become a cardiologist. Now, in the course of the evening, he spent time talking to us about what made a good fish oil and what made a bad fish oil, how much you should take. Uh, I learned all about uh, EPAs, DHAs. I learned about whether or not uh, fish oil, uh, what fish it should come from. Um, what the if there were hazards to fish oil, and I learned some amazing things about fish oil that that blew me away. 
And here, why, how did I learn this? I learned this because I spent time researching, in this case, researching in person. I recorded my sessions with um, the doctor. It is in the process of being transcribed now. And I have to tell you that when we came out of that session, we rewrote the copy that existed um, based on his story about his father going to the hospital. So when you know your avatar, and we talked to him about you know, who we were selling to, who are his patients, what are their ages, what are their problems, what kinds of heart issues do they have? And I have to tell you that I came away knowing more about uh, fish oils and all of the what went into that than, than I ever dreamed possible. But I can tell you without a shadow of a doubt that there are people who don't do the research and they don't spend any time on it. Now, one of the greatest copywriters alive today, his name is Paris Lampropoulos. Paris has done lots and lots of work in the supplement industry. And when you talk to Paris um, about supplements, the, the man knows as much about supplements as any doctor you would meet. In fact, I'm a member of a private copy group with Paris as a member, and sometimes when someone has some kind of a health issue or someone in their family has a health issue, they'll throw it out and Paris will come out and tell the people what they should do. Not that he's pretending to be a copywriter, but the truth of the matter is that the man knows, knows um, has done the research that well that, um, that, that it's just incredible as to what the guy does. Now, you may think you know your, um, your niche and you know your avatar, but if you can't tell me what percentage of, your, of this niche is male and what percentage is female, if you can't tell me how old they are, if you can't tell me whether they live in a house or an apartment, if you can't tell me where they live, if you can't tell me what are the other things, what do they study, what do they look at, what movies do they go to, what programs do they watch, how much time do they spend in social media, what are they spending their money on, then you don't know your avatar and you're basically, um, you're basically writing blind. And when you write blind, you de press your results. Who am I writing to? So someone said, well, I'm writing to women. Of course I'm writing to women. Really? And do you think that you're writing to 18-year-old women and 55-year-old women at the same time, that they're both interested in the same things? Do you think that a 40-year-old woman is in the same, interested in the same things as a 65-year-old woman? No, they're not. They may have similar things and may be interested in their appearance, but the way you talk to them is different. And unless you really know who you are talking to, you're going to be unable to sell them effectively. Right now, let's do an exercise. Let's take 30 seconds, okay, 30 seconds. I'm going to count now. I want you to write down on a sheet of paper as much as you know about your target audience. Ready? As much as you can. Just one word at a time. Write down what you know about your target audience and go. And there will be pri a prize for the best answer. Go ahead and write it down. As much as you know. And as soon as you've written it down, Go ahead and, and type what you've written in the, ch in the chat as much as you know. Go ahead and type it in the chat. I will pick a winner and there will be a prize.
Good prize. And tell me what your market is. Let's go pick out a really good prize here. Okay, I have a prize picked out. Let's take a look at some of your answers. Okay, smart, successful, have money, men and women. Unfortunately, not good enough. You're not telling me their age or that's not enough. Life coaching is your niche, but you're not telling me anything about the people. My target audience all have the same ideals. No, that's the health. Nope. Health. Are they interested in fighting cancer? Are they interested in alternative medicine? Health is not my, gardening. Uh-uh, not enough. Health conscious, not enough. Women 45 and over live in their own homes, physically somewhat fit, looking for other women connections, need reassurance. That's good so far. Muscle builders, men 18 to 65, Women, 18 to 50, health, exercise, and fitness. That's not bad. Okay, middle class married men and women ages 35 to 54 with school-aged children, predominantly with college education and household income of 15 to 75K a year, living in urban areas. Oh, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, volunteering, inspiration, giving people, whatever, almost more. It's a 28-year-old professional. My market is brides. She has a premiation for quality. So you're only selling to 28-year-old women. Those are the only people getting married. 50-year-old um, women. Um who have breast cancer, use online, and friends for info, fear of chemo, low, middle, that's not bad. Uh, fibromyalgia women, 32 to 60, usually married, two to three kids, more if employed, good. Women is not a niche. Sixty-five plus is not a niche. Okay, now here we're getting um Male over 40, interested in health, arthritis, and pain relief, alternative medicine. That's pretty good. Client avatar for my county firm. Owner of a small or medium-sized business in Broward County, age 35 to 65, male or female, wants to minimize their taxes and their accounting fees. That's pretty good, Lee. Okay, kneel to heal emotionally. Not enough. Okay. Successful, confident, accomplished career women, age 35 to 55, U.S.-based, family-focused, career achievement, homeowners looking for a new challenge. That's pretty good. You could do a little bit better with that. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. You can't type that fast. Okay. Um... You see, some of you are coming back and adding stuff in based on what I'm saying. Okay. Um, moms age 24 to 45 with autistic children with household income, 50 to 100K. That's pretty good. You can do better than that, but that's pretty good. Oh, my God. This guy's written a dissertation here, Sean. Um, market number one of two. Men and women age 40 to 60 to aspire to finish their second half of their life strong and finally do the things that they've always told themselves they want to do. Moderately to clearly successful in business. 
They have disposable income to invest in themselves via consulting coaching seminars. Maybe business owners looking to add the I IT factor or it factor. That is excellent. Guys, okay, so what I'm seeing here, what I'm seeing here is um, is that most of you don't really know your market. Yes, I know I'm putting you on the spot, but um, um, but seriously, there um, um, the the person who who did the best um, here is is Dritan, um, who talked about middle class married men and women age 35 to 54 with school age children predominantly with college education average household income of 50 to 75k per year living in urban areas of the USA that's good Dritan, just reach out to me and I'll get your uh, prize to you what I am giving for uh, a prize is I'm going to pull one of um, a book on copy and the book on copy is um, it's called breakthrough advertising um, in the past um, in the past that um, uh, that book has sold for over a thousand dollars now if you can find it it sells anywhere for um, for a hundred to hundred fifty dollars if you can find the hardbound copy uh, Dritan, um we will get that out to you just reach out to me okay so what I'm showing you here is that most of you didn't do a very good job. So the first thing is if you don't know your niche, you can't sell to your niche. You've got to, you've got to really know who these people are. And most of you are unfortunately flying by the seat of your pants. Okay. So that was one exercise. Let's go. Hold on. Let me just check in. Are you guys learning something here? And we're just getting started. Are you learning anything? Okay. Here we go. And, and Holly, you did pretty good, too. And Sean, you did very good as well. Lee, you also did very well. Okay, here we go. So you got to ask that question, just like the rock group, The Who. Who are you? You have to talk to your audience. When I was learning to write for the golf market, I remember um, I finally got an email from John Calton. And the email said, Harlan Trying to teach you about copy is like trying to teach a Rottweiler to pee in the backyard and not in the house. Stop writing and go talk to some golfers. Go out and, and play at least 18 holes of golf and don't come back to me until you have. And I took golf lessons, played 18 holes of golf, and became a much better copywriter in that market because I talked to lots and lots of people. Um, I also will never forget the day that I was writing to the women's cosmetic market, and he told me to, A, read a Danielle Steele novel, and two, uh, spend the day at the cosmetics counter at Bloomingdale's talking to the women about why they were picking specific cosmetics. Okay, I absolutely, um, I absolutely learn. But you guys need to know who your market is. Now, I mentioned this briefly before, but you have to write your offer first. You want to spend the most time on what makes you the most money. So a lot of people want to have the best headline. A lot of people want it to start and whatever, and all of these are important things, but they don't spend enough time on the part of the letter that actually makes them money, and that is the offer. So I'm recommending that you do things a little differently. I'm recommending that you, um, I'm recommending that you start with your offer. I don't mean that the letter begins with your offer. I mean that you write out your offer as clearly as possible using what we're going to learn in the rest of this webinar. 
spend the majority of your efforts on what is the offer. Is it clear? What do they get? Can you show your offer to a person in a coma and they will understand what you what they get? If the answer is no and you show it to a couple of people and you should do not be the only person who reads your copy. Okay? That's probably the biggest mistake that you can make. Is start with your offer. When you talk to um, copywriters like my friend Brian Keith Boyles, Brian is um, is one of the legends of the copywriting world. And when he writes, he does two things that I want you to pay attention to. Number one, he starts with the offer. And number two is, and this is in general people need to know, is that they write on too high a level. The first thing that happens when someone comes to me for copy coaching is I can tell right away by um, by their copy the level that they're writing on. Now, you want to shoot, if you're not a copywriter, you want to shoot that your copy is on is no higher than a seventh grade level. Ideally, you want to be on a sixth grade level. Gary Halbert is, wrote on a third grade level. He could take the most complex topics in the world and write on a third grade level that anybody could understand. I saw some of the things I've I've taken and tested some of his levels, and they come up on a third grade level. Now, let me tell you, there's a famous story about Mark Twain. And Mark Twain, they, they used to get paid by the word. And when they wanted a novel from Mark Twain, he would you know, tell them how many words, and he would write a novel with approximately that many words. One time, a magazine reached out to him, and they said, hey, we only have... Um, an opening of just a couple of pages. We want a short story from you. And Twain submitted a quote that per word was twice as much as usual. And they said, why are we, um, uh, why are we paying you more? And his response was because to get things to fit, I have to focus more it's harder to write shorter uh, things than longer. It is extremely hard to write on a third or a fourth grade level. There is an app. It is called the Hemingway app. You can type into Google Hemingway app, and you can copy your and paste your writing in there. And it will tell you first, it will tell you the level of your copy, okay? Second, it will tell you to a degree what's wrong with your copy. It's called the Hemingway app, and uh, like Ernest Hemingway. And I will tell you some of the things that it hates, okay? If you want to write better copy, number one, rule number one, you should be writing this down. No sentence can have more than 10 words in it. No sentence can have more than 10 words in it. I have looked at copy where sentences are 40 words, 50 words. By the time someone gets through a 50 word sentence, they have no friggin' idea what you wrote at word number 10. You've lost them. Now I know that a lot of people talk in long, long sentences. But this ain't conversation, folks. So every sentence should have a maximum of 10 words. That's the first thing that is going to have a dramatic impact on your copy. Second thing that will have a dramatic in impact is don't use passive voice. 
don't use passive voice at all. If you only use those two rules that I just shared with you, write uh, for a level, shoot for a grade six level by shortening your sentences and not using passive voice, you will immediately significantly improve the level of your copy. Copy is not a business letter. Copy is not the party of the first part, you know, here, here, for, here and after known as the party of the first part. None of that stuff. Okay. Um, uh, okay. Um, can I give an example of passive voice? Um, I was smacked in the head uh, by a foul ball. Okay, I was smacked, passive voice. I was not active. Um, as opposed to the batter, I drove a foul ball and it hit a, a customer. It, it hit a fan in the head. Okay, so the batter is the active. Me sitting in the stands getting hit by a foul ball, um, I'm passive. Okay, passive voice is more difficult for people to process. So don't do it. All right, let's go on. We've got so much to go through. Yikes. Okay, what's your USP? USP stands for Unique Selling Proposition. Some people call it elevator speeches. Some people call it USP. It, USP in its most simple means, and people aren't going to like this, what do you or your product do that is completely unique from what anyone else's product does? That means you can't say, well, mine is like this. That is not unique. What do you do that is unique? And therefore, um, that's really something that is tremendously important. If you can make a claim to uniqueness, there is no one here. Be able to finish a sentence that says, I am the only one. I am, for example, in the case of, let's say, uh, Lee, or in the case of Mark, who does um, Find Your Soulmate. I am the only person who, where we offer the only service that, go ahead and, and everybody try and write your own USP in um, that, remember, it has to be unique. No one else can say it. Let's do another exercise for another prize. Um, write your thing, but remember, it has to be unique. If there's anyone else who, who does it, then it's not unique. What do you do that no one else does? Take a moment to think about it and then write it in. Oh, Sean, you're done already? Now that is interesting. He says it so so quickly, I am the only copywriter that focuses on hearing loss. That's excellent, Drew. Okay, Judy, I am the only pet grief coach who will help you write and publish the love story of your beloved pet. That's good. We are the only diocese who can send medical construction and outreach missions. Really, Bruce? Come on, there's got to be another one. I mean, that's good, not admirable, but I bet you're not the only one. We have the only seven-week program to attract your soulmate. How do you know that, Mark? How do you know that there are many programs on attracting your soulmate? I want you to refine that. Um can create a single-page website that is hosted by us, 
created by us and paid by monthly rental with no upfront cost. I'm a little unclear on the last part, but that's pretty good. I have identified the eight major diet plateaus and how to break through them. That's very interesting, Sylvia. Um, but start with like, I am the only person. Here's Lee. I am the only CPA that delivers a hot, fresh pizza with every tax return I prepare. That's pretty good. Um, okay, Alice, that's not clear yet. Anyone else want to play? Take another moment or two, type it in. Okay, so Bill's is my pharmaceutical grade fish oil is the only one that matches Lovaza at one third of the retail price. So your USP is dependent on some something else. And um, I don't think they're going to know what that is. Um, that's interesting. Jen's still working on it. I help veterans transition into the civilian world by recalibrating the way they think, teaching them ways to generate cash flow and help them realize suicide is not an option. That's very good, Brent. Um, Brad, that's not quite there yet. We take the headache out of local marketing by doing it for you for less than a coffee a day. But you're not, you don't know if you're the only one who does it. Linda, that, that's not unique. I am the only person who helped you lose weight by focusing on dealing with emotions and triggers. No, you're not the only one who does that. So you need to come up with something that's, that's more unique. Okay, well, we are going to go in the interest of, of, of time here, and we are going to give the thing to saying it simply. Drew Kutnick, I am the only copywriter that focuses on hearing loss. Please reach out to me, Drew, afterwards, and um, I will hook you up. And a couple more that came in. I am the only life coach that uses the vehicle of golf to not only fix your slice, but will help you fix your life. That's good. And Jen came up with hers. I'm the only social media management school who follows students through the whole process. We teach exactly how to get clients, how to keep clients happy, and how to scale your agency faster. That is very, very good. And Jen, I want to connect with you because I want to talk to you about something. That's very, very good. Um, Brenda, I am the only former hairdresser that creates sales funnels for Salona. It's good. Um, that, that was good. Okay, so you guys, I think, are learning something here. Of course, the world's most famous USP, the concept USP, was coined by an advertising guy by the name of Rosser Reeves. Rosser Reeves published a book called Reality and Advertising. It went out of print years ago. It's a great book. Um, I tried to republish it, and it, I found out it was not in the public domain. I tracked down Rasa Reeves' ex-wife. She was a professor at Fashion Institute of Technology. I found a phone number. It turned out to be the phone number of one of her kids. They connected me with her mom. She did not want to republish the book. Um, and so that was a case of Harlan, get permission first, because I had already taken the book, scanned the book, transcribed the book, and then I was not allowed to sell the book because it's under copyright. So I kind of did that one a little bass backwards. Um, but Rasa Reeves' most famous USB was melt in your mouth, not in your hands, for the M&M &M company. So 
a USP, a unique claim, when that came out, this was the only candy that could make that claim. A powerful USP sells your product for you. When you come up with a USP like Jennifer did about her um, social media school, it does the work for you. Okay, now, here we come to one of the big things that people do not, that, that people get wrong. This one, I'm going to say, is one of the top things that they do. This is, people do not know the difference between features and benefits. We talk about the radio station WIFM, what's in it for me? Now imagine this disc jockey doing all of the talking, but all she's focused about is telling you what's important to you. Well, you'd pay attention. Now, there are two elements. One is called a feature. One is called a benefit. Let's use an example of a local gym. A local gym says we are open um, 24 hours a day. 24 hours a day, that's a feature. But they can convert that into a benefit by saying we're open 24 hours a day so you can work out at a time that's convenient for you. Even if it's at a different time every day, we will have a trainer waiting for you, even if it's 3 o'clock in the morning. The difference, a feature, is we are open 24 hours a day. The benefit is so we're always here for you whenever you want to train. A feature is... Um, my, uh, Omega, uh, my Omega, um, includes, uh, 1,280 milligrams of Omega-3 fish oil. That is a feature. A benefit is, so by taking just one capsule a day, you are exceeding the minimum daily requirements and can help uh, prevent cardiac disease. Okay? Um, so most copy that I see is feature-oriented. You tell everybody they're going to have six webinars. You tell everybody um, that, you know, there's a membership group. But what are the benefits? Now, understand that pe when people come to a website, they are giving you an extremely, extremely limited amount of their attention. I call it six seconds until death. They're going to give you six seconds. If in the six seconds they do not find something that is of benefit to them, they're going to be gone. You need to, um, you need to take to get them to the page and have them see a benefit almost immediately. And preferably, as we're going to get into headlines, a benefit <coughs> that is going to catch their attention. The more benefits that you can put in your headline, the more likely they're going to stay. So if we uh, take one of the uh, Carlton's uh, um, classic headlines. It's like in the golf headline, eliminates hooks and slices, you know, 
uh, drive the ball only down the center of the fairway and add 75 plus yards um, every time you swing the club. That's benefit one, benefit two, benefit three. Sometimes a really good headline will have five or six benefits in it. Other times, people go for an attention-grabbing headline. One of the most powerful headlines that I put in, um, that I did, um, was make your mirror say wow, okay? Make your mirror say wow was um, for a um, cosmetic product and women understood that um, they were going to look in the mirror and, and, and the mirror was going to say wow back to them, it immediately put them into like a totally different frame of mind. Now, uh, just like Drew had a really short USP that was really effective, when you come up with one of the headlines like that, it's really powerful. A lot of people are afraid to um, to put a powerful headline. A lot of people think that a powerful headline automatically means it's a hype headline, and that's not the case. And that's why we're going to go on to the next area, which is headline, lead, and hook. Now here, lead is is not spelled incorrectly. A lead, l E-D-E is a newspaper term about transitioning. It is very well known that the success of a sales letter is often very, very dependent on a headline. And some headlines are magic. Um, people like Dan Kennedy will try... Uh, 50, 70 headlines to find the one that fits. Um, early in my career, um, Yannick Silver um, asked me to, um, Yannick Silver asked me to uh, write for him, and he wanted 75 headlines before I got started. I was like, man, can't you just pick one? So, um, it was such a pain in the neck, but finally he picked a headline and we went on and did it. Um, I did a sales letter with John Calton and David Garfinkel in the gold niche. And here I am, you know, a pretty decent copywriter at this time. This was only maybe a year or two ago. And they said, okay, Harlan, we want to see 20 different headlines. And then the two of them fought over the headline that they wanted. You want something that is going to capture attention. Sometimes your um, uh, sometimes your headline is a little bit longer, and sometimes it's a little bit shorter. Um, as long as it does the job, that's all you care about. Now, if you ever read one of John Calton's letters, John has these amazing hooks. I quoted one of them, you know, the, he has the one-legged golfer. He has the blind golfer. Um, these, um, these situations uh, of, are just so unusual, you have to read it. And what you want to do is you want to study in order to write great headlines, you need to study great headlines, okay? Now, everybody in my family is embarrassed by me, but guess what comes to my house every week, okay? Yes, it's true. I have the National Enquirer, and they are stacked next to me, and I read it for the headlines. Um, it's amazing the stuff that they come up with. But those headlines are so powerful that um, those headlines are so incredibly powerful that the people who write the headlines for the National Enquirer are among the highest paid copywriters in the world. 
and all they do is come up with these headlines. Because if there's a good headline, no matter how stupid it is, they're going to make more money. Now, I went to a seminar with Jay Abraham. I actually wrote the sales letter for the seminar, so I was gifted to come in. And in the afternoon, Jay um, sat on the stage and read us articles from the Weekly World News. And I remember one of the articles that he read to us was about how Bigfoot was seated as a juror on a trial. And the thing that I will remember is that Jay Abraham, we were all like just doubled over in laughter. And Jay looked at us across his glasses and he said, I want you to understand that there are people in America who believe that this is true. Now that is understanding your market, okay? If you are in the women's market, you should be um, you should be going to the Cos um, Cosmopolitan website and studying their headlines. Yeah, you know, a lot of them are neo porn, etc. But look at the way they write and their powerful headlines. If you are in the health market, I have a subscription because I write so many health letters. I have a subscription to men's health and to women's health. No, I'm not having any kind of surgery. I get it only because I want to see the headlines. Those magazines are published by Rodale, one of the big publishers out there that knows copy. They hire A-list copywriters. Um, to write for them, and those headlines are absolutely killer. So you should be studying those things. The cheapest education that you could have as a copywriter is to go into a local Barnes and Nobles while they while they still exist, and go to the magazine section and sit down and just look at magazine covers, and either with your camera. Uh, your smartphone camera, take pictures of the ones that they like, that you like, or write them down. Now, Jay Abraham also gave another suggestion, and this one is absolutely brilliant. What I'm going to tell you now is, is a Jay Abraham idea, very, very powerful. When you want to come up with headlines, go ahead and study all of the titles in your niche on Amazon. Many of the books on Amazon let you look inside. Don't just look at the titles, look at the chapter titles as well. Now I'm going to tell you a secret. Headlines are not copyrightable. If you see a title that you like, there is nothing stopping you legally from using it. It is not covered by copyright, um, a chapter title, whatever. It's theirs for the taking. And even if you don't want to take someone else's thing, you could be inspired by lots and lots of things before you ever leave your home. There's just so much there. There's an abundance of how you can grow your business without even leaving your home, okay? Now, here's something that most people do when they write copy, and that is that, isn't she adorable? Um, the number one thing that people do is they get chatty, and they start to talk, and they start asking questions. Questions are not copy. So both of the sales letters that I saw this week began with questions. Could you be happier in your life? Are you stuck when someone asks you what you do? These are all delaying tactics. A good sales letter gets right into the heart of selling right away. Tell them what you got. Or as Carlton used to say to me, 
Harlan, just sell the damn thing. Get in there right away. Don't stall. Don't play around. Get people hooked. I just finished a sales letter for options trading and built it all around um, the Pokemon craze. And uh, it's called Pokemon Profits. And I go on with the Pokemon hook and I take that and develop that into uh, selling options trading. But I started with the hook of Pokemon representing augmented reality. Now, do not get chatty in a sales letter. When I was a kid, I had a uncle who was a, um, a chess grandmaster. And when I would make a move, he would demand I justify my move. And it didn't matter what it was. I would move my pawn out to the king, and he would say, why did you do that? And I would say, uh, because I had to make a move to start the game. And he would say, nope, that's not a good reason. Okay. Um, why did you move? Um, I moved because it's my turn. No, nope, he would put back my piece. Okay, uh, why did you move? And I was running out of things like, hey, I'm just a kid. I, I moved because it's my turn. No, nope, not it. Um, and um, the um, he wouldn't accept it. Um, why are you moving? I'm moving because I want to control the center of the board. That was it. Now, when I started to learn copy, I was working with a uh, copywriter named Carl Galetti. He looks at one of my sales letter and says, okay, Harlan, why did you write this word? I wrote this word because I had to get started. No, 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 justify this word. Well, uh, he goes, okay, you can't justify it. Out it comes. Next word. Why would you write next word? I thought I was going to die by the time he got through the first paragraph. He ended up slashing pages and pages of my copy. I learned to justify every word. If you're just writing because you don't know what to say, you're wasting time and you're hurting sales. Don't ask questions. Get right into, here's what I got. Here's what it's going to do for you. That is super important. Now, bullets. I don't see too many sales letters done by people who are um, um, uh, who aren't professionals. But bullets are really powerful. There are people who buy products only because of a single bullet. Let's see. I'm going to reach out here, and I should have off to the side. Where is it? Got some good stuff here, but I know... Come on, where is it? I have a sales letter over here that nobody that that people haven't seen. And I don't have Sandra because her father-in-law died. And so it's not here. Let me grab um let me grab my book and turn to a sales letter. Okay. This was a sales letter I did for Frank Kern. The, um, the headline was, Lazy fat boy from Australia sells his puny niche sites for $5 million cash, even though he didn't actually create the sites, make the products, or even write the sales letters. And then 
I wrote some bullets. Bullet number one, the one word at the core of your online business. If you don't live by the word, you're not really in the game and you're making one tenth of the money you could be. Um, the real secrets for making insane amounts of money uh, with your website, totally hands off. Only a handful of gurus know the secret, let alone share how it's really done. How to design a website for maximum sales. Most of what you hear about designing a website for profit is garbage. Get real on this now if you want to succeed online. How to eliminate online shopping cart order form uh, bailouts. Roughly 50% of the people who click to order will not complete the purchase unless you know the inside scoop. How to slash refunds to the absolute minimum. This simple technique defies logic but is used by the smartest online marketers. Your hard-earned money stays in your pocket where it belongs. The correct way to send emails for maximum response. Forget everything you've heard on the subject. There's a secret way that's infinitely more powerful than any other. And if you don't use it, up to 90% of your email will bounce. Um, a simple trick that can double the profitability of all your online sales letters. This can turn a certain loser into a winner and a winner into a grand slam home run. Bullets, it could be a single one of those bullets that gets someone to click the buy now um, thing. And you don't know which one it's going to be. However, if you don't um, do it, then you're going to have a problem and you're you're going to be uh, losing sales. Create stories with your bullets. Plant pictures in their mind. Bring your point home. Uh, translate a complex detail into plain English. Um, there are two kinds of bullets that you need to know about. Bullet number one is called an open bullet. An open bullet is where the people understand exactly what they're going to get. 16 ways to come up with a headline, um, even if you have never written one before. Okay? That's very clear. Um, a closed bullet would be um, a simple trick to come up with a headline that even most copywriters don't know, okay? Open bullets say what they're going to get. Closed bullets hint at something but never reveal it. A good sales letter includes both open bullets and closed bullets, okay? Testimonials. I see sales letters without any testimonials at all. And uh, many of them, people say, well, it's a new product. I don't have anything to say. I don't have any testimonials yet. Well, uh, talk to some people, give them an advanced look at the product. It's worth it. Testimonials are worth their, uh, their weight in gold. Yesterday, I was a drunk. Today, I was elected president. Thanks, Harlan. Okay. Testimonials should be short. Okay, you do not want a testimonial that goes on for pages and pages, unless, of course, um, the testimonial is from somebody who is, um, uh, who, uh, like, founded PayPal. Um, but one of the sales letters that I wrote had testimonials from celebrities that I, one of the most successful sales letters I ever wrote it was for um, a voice coach, and he was a Hollywood voice coach. And the um, this was my first sales letter, I think, that um, uh, that went over um, a, a million dollars. Um, and um, um, the first testimonial. My name is Bond, James Bond. Arthur Joseph started as a teacher of mine years ago. Over these years has become a good friend whose teachings of vocal awareness have become constant in my life. 
He enlightens with compassion and understanding of the human spirit and above all that works. Pierce Brosnan, the actor. The next one's called I'll Be Back. Author's vocal awareness strategies continue to help advance my vocal stature. The orderly step-by-step -step exercises give me usable tools to repeatedly grow in voice clarity, range, and power. Arnold Schwarzenegger, actor and governor of California. Uh, chicken soup for your voice. Arthur Joseph's proven techniques will make your voice heard and get you where you want to go. Jack Canfield, uh, chicken soup for the soul. The secret to unlimited power. I was able to learn an incredible amount about my voice and about how to have a greater impact with more pleasure, pre pleasure and less pain. Tony Robbins, success coach. Um, this was the level of um, of the testimonials that I dealt with. As a matter of fact, I had so many testimonials um, that I had them running up and down the side of the page of the sales letter. Um, and testimonials really do make the sale. If you do not have testimonials, first of all, number one, people do not trust you. And number two is um, not only do they not trust you, but um, they, um, they honestly um, have a reason to be skeptical of you. Um, and people, a good testimonial should have a, a first name and a last name, preferably a city. Um, if they're a celebrity, it should indicate what their celebrity status is. Um, but initials are a very poor testimonial. People think that you're making it up. So go ahead and um, uh, so go ahead and uh, make sure that you have powerful directed testimonials. And don't be like this guy who the only testimonial that he can give is that he's happy that that bench was there. Now there's something that's called risk reversal. Or as Dan Kennedy says, make them believe then take their money. You want to give people a good guarantee. Now my mom is one of these people who believes that if you're on the internet, you're a scammer. I said, Ma, is that for everybody on the internet? Yes. I said, what about um, stores like Macy's? Well, no, not Macy's. Well, how about like L.L. Bean? Do you ever buy anything from L.L. Bean online? Yeah. Are, are they scammers? No. Someone I don't know is a scammer. I said, everybody? Yeah. I said, well, what if you came to one of my websites and you didn't know who I am? Would I be a scammer? She said, don't be ridiculous. She goes, I know who you are. The bottom line is there are a lot of people like my mom out there who don't believe you. They just don't believe you. Don't take it personally. They don't believe anybody. And because they don't believe anybody, it's your job to overcome their skepticism. And what you want to do is remove the risk. The more you remove the risk, the more sales you're going to make. So, for example, I gave a seminar years ago, and the seminar, the, the, the guarantee was, if you came to this seminar and you were not happy for any reason the first day, not only would I refund the price that you came to the seminar, but I would also pay for your plane ticket. Um, so the bottom line here is that um, the, um, the more you remove someone's risk, the more likely they're going to buy. What can you do, not just to guarantee a refund of their money, but what can you do that would go beyond that? When you have something like that, then you have good risk reversal. And, you know, it doesn't have to be a money back guarantee. Sometimes risk reversal is if um, you haven't seen the success that I've promised you, I will work with you until you do. That's a good guarantee. 
Um, so the but, but if you don't have a guarantee, you are hurting sales. And by the way, by offering a guarantee, expect people to take you up on it. And 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 be willing to honor the guarantee. Don't say only fooling. Okay. Now, there's nothing wrong with a guarantee having conditions. Okay. A lot of people buy products and never ever use them online. They just don't. And so if you're promising someone a benefit and you have like a membership site with all of the videos and they've never ever logged in, there are new membership sites that require people to indicate that they have completed a video. And you can't indicate that they've completed the video until they've watched it. Well, you can give a guarantee that says, go through my entire program, watch all of the videos, do all of the exercises, and if it doesn't work for you, you're not happy at that point, I'll be happy to do it. But that makes the guarantee dependent upon them taking action. Okay? So um, if, um, if they don't do things, well, maybe they shouldn't expect the same kind of guarantee. What do you think of those kind of guarantees? Would those work for you? If someone says, um, join my program, take you know, go through all of the lessons, do all of the exercises, and that's not good. Um, so you're going to miss out on stuff. All right. And um, here we go. So here was one of the most reviled politicians, whatever, but he spent his whole life getting people to believe in him. I'm not sure what his... Um, uh, what his uh, testimonial or m ability to make people believe today. We've become even more jaded than that back then. Now, on the next slide, what I'm going to share with you are is something that most people never, ever come to understand. It's extremely powerful. You better have your pen ready because... This is going to be awesome. Who wants to make more sales? Who wants to make more sales? Ready? This next slide is going to help you make more sales. Here are the emotional drivers that make people buy. I hope you have your pen ready. Number one, consistency. Uh, one of the most powerful things that people do is there's a consistency. When someone buys a product, okay, you go and you buy a suit and you're trying on the suit and then they show you when you come out of the dressing room that sitting there waiting for you is um, a, um, um, is, uh, are a couple of shirts, a couple of ties, a couple of socks even matching underwear. They know if they have that ready, they're going to make more sales. That is the entire um, concept of the upsell. When you buy something, your wallet is out, your credit card is out, you're ready to buy something else. Objection raising. If there's something wrong with your service or your program, People will respect you if you put it up front. The second part of that is called objection resolution. It's where you raise the objections that might come up in people's minds, but then you solve them for them. Next, involvement, ownership. Show people what it would be like to actually have your product. Walk them through it. Treat them as if they've already made the purchase. Next, and unfortunately, we live in a market that is so lacking this. It's integrity. I remember being, I was at a seminar in Israel and the vice president of ClickBank was there. And this was too good. You know, people say I have a big mouth. Fools rush in where angels fear to tread. 
I went up to the vice president of ClickBank and I said, you know, you really have some nerve. You have offers on your site that are just pure bull. He goes, what are you talking about? I said, how about the 14-year-old girl who made three quarters of a million dollars online in six months? He goes, I'm not familiar with that. I said, you're full of bull. You're not familiar with it. It is your number one selling product on ClickBank. How dare you sell something that you absolutely know is based on a lie? He goes, well, I don't know it's based on a lie. I said, where have you been online? Um, they've identified who wrote the actual product, and it wasn't a 14-year-old girl. Um, there is no 14-year-old girl. It's just a scam. I can name the people behind it, but you already know because you have their account information. When people give up on integrity, they give up on sales. It probably was not the smartest move in my life to go after the vice president of ClickBank and calling him a fraud. But I couldn't live with myself if I didn't do it. Storytelling, just like the story I told you, which is absolutely true. People love a good story. Tell someone a story and it will push them over the edge. Show them the value of what they have. Pull on their emotions. Now, this is just a nice thing, but it works like heck, and that is greed. People are motivated by greed, okay? And I would be less than truthful if I didn't tell you that greed is a huge selling factor. Credibility. Are you believable? When I get on a webinar and I teach about copy, I'm believable because people know I'm a copywriter and a decent copywriter. If I got on a webinar to teach figure skating, I don't think there would be hundreds of people registered for the webinar. Why? Because I have no credibility as a figure skater, as well I shouldn't. Belonging. Are you creating an environment or a club? Because people want to belong to something. Um, exclusivity. Is it limited to a certain number of people? Are people who join going to get something that other people can't have? Are they going to have access to something? Urgency. <coughs> <coughs> Excuse me. There is a concept that the late, great Gary Halbert, Halbert used to call porcupines in heat. And as Halbert explained it, the porcupine goes into heat but once a year. If it doesn't mate in that brief period of time that it's, it's in heat, then it's never going to mate. Your clients are like porcupines in heat. And if the, you do not get them to take action now, then um, if you don't get them to take action now, then they're not going to take action. They're never going to buy. Don't assume, oh, you know what? They'll think about it and maybe they'll come back in a few days. Not going to happen. Guilt. I sell a product that, um, in the dog market. It is a supplement. And the sales letter is all about the guilt that people have for not taking better care of their dogs. And finally, hope. Hope is one of the most powerful things that, um, that you can use. Hope that someone's position in life is going to change. Hope that they're going to get better by taking a supplement. Hope that they're going to find their soulmate. And the most powerful of all is an NLP term called criteria. If you can identify a person's criteria, you can sell them. In fact, if you can identify their criteria and use that powerfully, they will have a hard time not buying. These are the emotional drivers, but you can't find out what these are unless you really know your market. So if you put it all together before you write 
avatar research. What's your USP? What are the features versus benefits? Can you write your offer first? Getting a headline, lead, hook, bullets, the heart of the offer, testimonials, risk reversals, emotional drivers. When you do all of these things, you have not just decent copy, but you have very good copy. And when you have very good copy, whether it starts with a Facebook ad or a webinar or whatever, it is money in your pocket. As a matter of fact, um, you may not, you may be surprised or not surprised to find out that I've put together for the first time, I've never taught copy, period, to non-copywriters. Never. I didn't do this for two reasons. Number one, two of my teachers, David Garfinkel and John Calton, had courses out there. And just in my background, I'm respectful of my teachers, and I never wanted to do anything that conflicted with them. Well, over the years, David Garfinkel, Garfinkel's course came off the market. You can't even find it today. John's course, The Simple Writing System, appears every couple of years. It's not out there at all, all the time. And frankly, um, I figured after a number of people came to me and talked to me about um, getting started as a copywriter um, or showing me their letters, I knew that I had to do something. So I decided to put together a course. And you're looking at what the course is going to be like. This is what I'm going to, to teach. It's a six-week course, and it's designed to make you more money. Um, for the price of this course, you couldn't even get a copywriter to look over your copy. Frankly, it's a joke. I should be embarrassed. But you know what? I want to create the course, and then I'll raise the price. This is a course where we focus on your own work and develop a live project. You'll get individual attention in our Facebook group, and I have some pretty over-the-top bonuses. Uh, the bonuses are, are simply insane. The first bonus, bonus is massive headline swipe files. Number two, and this one has never, ever been offered to anyone who is not one of my mentoring students, access to my own swipe files. Swipe files are files um, that I've collected over the years. I have, Lord knows how many swipe files, filing cabinets filled with copy, organized by subject. And you tell me what you're writing. You're writing a supplement offer, whatever. I'll go into my swipe files. I'll have Sandra scan them to you, and I'll do this. The last time I had copywriting students over at um, my office, I made available my um, swipe files. They took them over to FedEx Kinko's, and they spent the entire night making copies, and they didn't even make a dent. You'll get a digital copy of my book, Steal This Book, and a Take Action Now bonus that is list, list limited to the first 15 only. And this is something that's absolutely insane. I was told that I was insane before I offered this. And that is one free month of copy coaching. These are one-on-one -on -one calls over Skype. When I coach someone, I charge $2,000 for the first month. This includes unlimited Skype calls focusing on your copy. If you are interested, the link is here. I'll drop it in the box. Um, but only the first 15 can get that bonus. Frankly, um, I'm charging too little for this um, and giving away a month um, uh, is, is kind of insane. Sandra is out of the country. If she saw me, she would stop it. Could someone click that link and tell me whether it works or not? Okay. Um, um, I already have John Calton's SWS. Um, so I probably don't need this doing well. 
have you written any sales letters with it? Remember, I'm one of John's coaches in that system. I, this is not the same as what John does. Also, it's focused around. So if you were in the SWS and you had one of the great copywriters working with you and you created an offer, then maybe you don't need this. But if you didn't, then you probably do. Okay. So um, reality and advertising is available at Amazon for less than 20 bucks. Then I suggest grab it. Grab it, grab it, grab it. I paid that. Uh, will this be available till this Saturday? Yes. Will this be beneficial for content writing for our websites? Yes, because you've got to get people to read. I'm going to tell you a true story, Christine. When um, the Doggington Post got started, um, Brandy, who was my lead writer, did not know how to write headlines. I couldn't get people to read any of the stuff on the Doggington Post, and I had to teach them how to write headlines. Now they know, and sometimes, you know, I'll go over and I'll see something, and I'll say, oh, you know what, that's not a really good headline. Um, you need to improve on that headline. And let me tell you, now our articles get read. So will that help? Absolutely. Other questions? And the page loads. Okay. Well, folks, if you are if you want to make money, this is a brain dead offer and opportunity for you. Um I hope you learned something. And um the the offer will be here. Um so um take advantage of it, but it's only two uh for the first fifteen is the bonus. Um, when will we will know if we're, I'm in the 15th? I haven't even looked at, at sales, um, coming in. So I see David is first and David, I know needs a sales letter. So you just got the shortcut to a sales letter and Brian, they're coming in slow. Honestly, um, Megs, I haven't seen yours yet. I haven't seen yours yet. There's Brian. Brian, we could do that on your kick. We could totally focus on Kickstarter if you want, or, or or a product. There's Megs. You just came in, so that's three out of the um, out of the fifteen are gone. Christine is gone. That's four. Um, and by the way, and um, so I'm just watching. Five are gone. That means that there are just 10 left who can get that extra bonus, which is kind of insane. You'll pay in full this Saturday. You're welcome, Mark. Good luck. Um, okay. So... If you go take a look over there, you'll see exactly what we're going to focus on. We have a Facebook group. It's all set up. You go directly to the Facebook group, and I will be posting bonuses there. Those of you who, um, who won um, those things, please be in touch so I can deliver your um, things. Here's what we're going to cover. It's over six weeks the bonuses, and the crazy bonus that normally is $2,000 on itself. And, um, and if you don't believe me, ask any of my copywriting mentoring students because that's what they paid for the first month. And um, this is something, it is designed to focus on creating something better, whether it's blog posts so people will read your stuff, or whether it is um, uh, just anything that we'll, we'll do. So we'll get started um, um, shortly. Yes, you can get in by um, this weekend. And um, I'm going to, for those of you who came late, I will post this as a replay and mail it out to everybody. 
Thanks so much, folks, for being here. You were great. I really hope you learned something. Have a wonderful night. Bye, everybody.